Okay, we're going to start on page 7, taking some notes here. <clears throat> we're looking at solving equations using multiplication and division. And remember, we're using inverse operations. So if we see multiplication, we do division. So we're going to start off with the example of 7x equals 56. We're seeing multiplication. So we're going to divide by 7 to isolate that x. x is then equal to 8. We can check it by saying 7 times 8 does it equal 56. And we see that it does check. These can become a little bit more complex if we're dealing with negatives and things that might end up in a decimal. If 13 is equal to negative 2x, I'm going to now have to divide by this negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a positive and invisible 1. 13 divided by negative 2 is negative, and half of 13 is 6 and a half, or 6.5. Again, with a check, 13 is equal to negative 6.5 times 2, negative 2. Oops, I reversed where the x is, but you get the idea. And that would be a positive number because the two negatives would equal a positive, and 6 and a half times 2 equals 13. Those should be pretty familiar to you guys from 7th and 8th grade math. What we're looking at now is the one that I find tends to confuse people more. When I have something that has a variable over a number. Negative 4 is equal to k divided by negative 5. Well, what I have here, this is a division problem. And the inverse of division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply something by this to get that k by itself. I want to turn that negative 5 as a denominator into a positive invisible 1. So I'm going to multiply by negative 5 over 1. That's the reciprocal. And then I'm going to multiply over here by the same thing. Negative 5 times negative 4 would be 20 divided by 1. So I get 20 equals k. What happened over here? Negative 5 over negative 5 would be a positive 1. And then we're just left with that 1 over 1. So we can test it by checking and going negative 4. Does it equal 20 divided by negative 5? 20 divided by negative 5 would be negative 4. So it checks. going to do one more. How about x over 8 equals 7? This is actually the opposite of this problem we did over here. Because well, you'll see as we start to multiply, the first thing we want to do is get that x by itself. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. 8 over 8 is invisible 1. 7 times 8 is 56 divided by 1. And we would do 56 divided by 8 equals 7 to check. 7 does equal 7, so it checks. So for a little bit trickier work, let's work on a couple problems that have a fraction or two in the problem itself. What if I have 4x over 6 equals 2 over 3? Remember, the goal is to get that x isolated. So what I'm going to do is multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction that it's with. Reciprocal means flip it or the reverse of it. So that when I multiply, I cancel everything out and get left with a 1. 6 times 4 is the same as 4 times 6. So they just become x. And on this side, 6 times 2 is 12. 
3 times 4 is also 12, so this x is equal to 1. And if you go back and look at the original problem, these are equivalent fractions, which kind of gives you a sense of how that worked out. To check it, I would just put a 1 in where that x originally was. And since 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 and 6 can be reduced to 2 over 3, this checks. What if I have a problem like, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room and go down here. What if I have 5 over 9 x equals 35? Again, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. 9 times 5 is the same as 5 times 9, so those cancel out and become invisible x. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here and multiply by 35 times 9. Well, to be honest, I can't do that in my head, but I can start doing a little counseling here. I'll explain more about this on another day when I'm actually here, but let's do 7 times 5 is the same as 35. That means these two 5s are going to cancel each other out. What is 7 times 9? Exactly, it's 63. So our x is equal to 63. You can go back and plug that in and check, and I'll leave this for you to do with a calculator on your own. I put 63 over 1 in where the x had been, so these two will be multiplied and divide by 9. And does that equal 35? You're going to find out that it does. So the problems I want you to practice today, pretty minimal. You're going to go to page 87. This is 2-2 again, so make sure your heading on your binder paper says 2-2. And you're going to do problems 1 through 18. And turn the page and also do problem 47. So it's really 87 to 88. Okay, that's your practice work today. We will check both 2-1 and 2-2 when I am back on Wednesday.